All right, here we go, guys. This is game number three for the Tide. We're going to play the Bulldogs. Uh, just so you know, we're going to play this one a little bit different. We have pretty quickly realized we do not have the depth to match up to the Bulldogs. We're pretty good with our starters, but we can't do anything. We don't have a backup pitcher, at least not one that's at starters level. You know, We go to a relief pitcher, we're not going to win. We're conceding the loss at that point. And uh, we don't want to do that. So we're going to have to build depth. And the only way to build depth at this point is going to be with game time. So probably for a couple of games, we're going to let other people start in positions, knowing it's good chance it's going to cost us a game. But it's okay. We're going to make that loss. We're going to make that choice now so that come springtime we're competitive. So in this situation here, we're going to let 16 get some get a, get start the game. She's going to get the first inning, get some reps under her belt, get some confidence built, you know, and you'll see after she gets through about the first three batters, she really settles down and is giving up some hits at that point, which is good. That's what we want. Uh, tell all my pitchers, I either want hits or I want strikeouts, but I don't want his walks. So that's our goal as pitching is to get them to not walk batters. I don't care if they give up hits. We'll play defense. But I don't like giving up walks because it's hard to defend the walk. So that's what we're going to work on after the first inning. Uh, we're going to blow five you blow up five runs really quickly. After that inning, though, we're really competitive the rest of the game. Uh, we stayed basically tied at four runs being scored each after the, after the first inning. Uh, Bulldogs take the final lead in the top of the fourth. We don't even play the bottom of the fourth because time had expired. Uh, again, at the end of the day, uh, I spend that to make that sound really good, like we're as good as the Bulldogs. We're close to them, but we're not as good as them. Uh, they still outplayed us. They're still better than us. But competitively, scoring-wise, we were right there with them after the first inning. Unfortunately, games aren't played that way. You play all innings in a game. So, you know, they're still better and they're still deeper than us. I mean, they can they can pull their pitcher, go to another pitcher, and still be competitive. And if that pitcher's off, they can pull that pitcher, go to another pitcher, and still be competitive. We don't have that yet. The only way to get there is by building reps, building depth. And so that's what we're doing in this game. So... Yeah, it will look a little different. Don't sweat too much to score here on this one. What we're looking at here is the details of the pitcher here. Let's just get her some reps. And then everybody else on defense, let's not make mistakes. Let's play like we practice. And uh, unfortunately, we're still going to have quite a few mistakes. So not as bad as the last game, though. I said the last game was a meltdown. This game's not a meltdown. This game, we do have some players make mistakes. A couple of them are just... Foolish mistakes we shouldn't make. Uh, and, and not the pitcher. You're going to see the pitcher turn her back to play. Later in the game, our catcher is going to turn her back to play. You should never do that. Never turn your back to the play. Uh, you, you never get frustrated and don't go get the ball. You know, stuff like that. The play's live. The play's got to keep going. We're going to have some outfielders who just don't feel the ball. And when they feel the ball, they don't. They're not aggressive trying to get the ball back in. They're just they're lazy to the ball. Uh, you know, one one out there not playing with any confidence at all. I don't know why she's a good player. She doesn't has a very low confidence play she makes. Uh, I mean, just outfielders not lining up in the correct spot. Outfielders not throwing the ball to the correct spot. Outfielders not hustling to the ball. We really got to work these outfielders. It just it's a lot of stuff to improve here with the outfielders. And also to start this game off. By the way, I want to point out first inning. Some of our backups. We got another girl playing second who, uh, you know, one of our backup infielders who'd come in and play some infield time. So good for her to get to come in and play at second base. We got really two of them in the outfield that we let come in and play some infield when we get opportunities. This was an opportunity because one of our infielders was actually late and missed the first inning. Because, uh, you know, it's, it, it, as we've said before, a fall ball, a lot of these girls, half of our team is involved in some kind of way with the football team. Whether it be some kind of, I don't know, marching band or cheer thing or dance thing or something like that you know and it's just they're all involved in other stuff so we know this that there's some of them are going to be a little late getting here this is uh one of those games where that happened so everybody got to move up and play up and that's the benefit of what depth anyways that being said we're about to start the game top of the first number 16 is pitching number 22 is catching 27 is on first 14 is on second seven is at shortstop and 19 is at third base here we go top of the first Oh. 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 
three balls, no strike. Outfield, there is no aggression on this play at all. There's no hustle. We're just lackadaisically playing out here. Um, I do appreciate, though, right side of the field both moved in to back up. Left center field was hustling. Left field, 
I mean, you're behind the bar. It's hard to see. It didn't look like left fielder was hustling at all. So we got to improve that. So right field, everybody's moving. The right fielder's going to field the ball right here, and everything's going good except for where she threw the ball to. I don't know what we're doing there. Uh, we say in every practice, infield go one, outfield go two. Uh, it's been said 100 times, and we didn't go two there. We went to in between one and two. I have no idea what that throw was. That was not good. But we got there. That is an improvement. But... That being said, that's this is a fundamental understanding of the game that we lack, and I don't know why. It's you got this, Riley. we've practiced this stuff over and over again, and we're just not getting it. So, Bring it down a I mean, to say we need more practice is hard. I don't. I'm hoping the reason why I'm doing a voiceover for this game, and I'm going to do another film study of this game. I'm going to try another way to get through these girls in the outfield and teach them what they're supposed to be doing because they're not getting it in the game. They're not getting it in practice. So, anyways, that's enough talk. Let's get back to the game. Running. Two balls, no strike. You got this, Riley. Check her out. Oh All right, runner on third steals home. That's the five-run limit. We are going to the middle of the first. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, this is number 16's uh, first time getting to start a game for us. And this was a practice game for her. This is her getting some reps, her getting some confidence, because you never know, come springtime, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen when a team's in spring, but – seem like every year the rules change on what we're going to do but typically the teams stay together so uh so yeah so she may be a pitcher for us she may be a pitcher for another team i don't know we'll see what happens but uh she needs a rep she needs practice she needs to build confidence at playing this position at this age group she has done it in 12u but she has never obviously first time being 16u so that's what this was for her she gets some reps in she gets some practice in we weren't too worried about the score we we're worried about people making sure they make their plays and there were a couple times people didn't make their plays. Uh, the play in the outfield there. The ball goes in the outfield. The outfielder, not only does the outfielder throw it to the wrong spot, the outfielder didn't even throw it to a person. Um, so, yeah, that's something that's got to be worked on. Uh, outfield on this team, a couple seasons in a row now, outfield is killing us on this team. We are not playing good outfield ball. 
Um, pitcher, though, let's focus on her because the outfield is going to be pretty much consistent the whole game. Pitcher here, this is her first time pitching for us. She, after she settled down, she got better. She walked like the first three batters. She gave up some hits. Then she walked, I don't know, one or two more after that. I think she hit one better. So, you know, better performance there. And uh, getting her, once she got her reps in, she's getting a little better at it. But obviously, the other team taught her, you do not turn your back on the play. A uh, good lesson to have. I, I, we didn't point it out to her in a game because she is just, I'm sure at the time, overwhelmed with a lot of stuff going on her first time starting. So we'll let her focus on that. That way she can grow in that area. And, uh, you know, hopefully she sees this video. We'll point out to her in practice, hey, don't turn your back to play. But also, she wasn't the only one, although not in this play. Later in the game, other people are going to turn her back to plays, and we're going to bit by other run scoring. But it wasn't from her. So, yeah, it's going to – it's a thing. We cannot turn her back to plays. So we'll work on that. We'll improve on that one too. Um, but, yeah, I just want to point out, this was our backups. So don't look too much into giving up the five runs here. We kind of knew that was going to happen. We got to build depth because we only have one starting pitcher versus a team that has three starting pitchers. So, yeah, here we go. We're about to start at the bottom of the second.
So I mentioned at the beginning of the game to um, that we're going to treat this like a scrimmage, and so score getting lopsided here. Not too worried about it. That's on the defensive side. Guys, on the offensive side, uh, this should not have happened. We got our first runner on base with a walk. Steals over to second. Uh, second batter here gets struck out, but the problem is she gets struck out looking. I don't mind getting struck out. I do mind getting struck out looking. Our third batter hits a ground out, moves the runner over to third. And our fourth batter, while she's batting, our runner on third gets picked off. And the reason why she gets picked off, she got too big of a lead. Now, I'm going to tell you the same thing now, because uh, the team, yeah, well, you are watching this. But maybe at some point, this is a, in the future, and a different team is watching this video. I tell all my base runners, you need to get picked off at least once or twice a season. Because you don't know your limit, and you don't know the catcher's limit until you get picked off. That's I say all the time. If you don't get picked off stealing bases, you don't get picked off getting leadoffs, you're not trying hard enough. I want you to get out to that point you're getting picked off and learn when you went out too far because that's when you know you went too far. So I, I don't mind she got picked off. You actually saw me high-five her. I thanked her for getting picked off. I said, thank you for playing aggressive, playing hard, because if we're not getting picked off, we're not trying. So that being said, she has now been picked off. She has now proved to the team she is trying. And I can now use that every time we have a team meeting. <laughs> so, uh, that being said, though, what we're looking at here, though, on offense, our first three batters were three up, three down. Our fourth batter is actually going to bat again to lead off the next inning. And we're going to be a lot more competitive after this inning. This first inning was not good. Not because the defensive side was getting me on this one, was the offensive side is not good. So, I knew the defensive side was going to struggle because I knew when we put the pitcher in there, it was going to be hard. I don't know why the offense struggled to. Either way, we're going to play a lot better going into the second inning on. So, um, and, and again, as I pointed earlier, we, we still made defensive mistakes. Outfield's not hustling. Outfield's not going to right places. Uh, guys, I, I pointed out in the game, I'm going to say it here too. When we practice, we always say infield go one, outfield go two. You should be trying to get the runner out taking a base. Cutoff throw is... You know, you're just getting the ball back in. They're making a hard throw. The inning's kind of over. We don't just go to the cutoff throw and make a low aggression play. We always want to try to get the runners out, especially at second. Uh, if the, that other play, if the left fielder had thrown the ball to second, we would have had the out. I mean, we had our beat. We would have had that out. And you're going to see it again later in this game, too. Another time we would have had an out had we made a more aggressive play. But anyways, I think that's all I got there. Uh, my camera's taking a beating. So uh, this kind of sucks. Uh, I actually had the camera set really good, but it got hit during warm-up pitches, and it moved it. I don't know. I, don't know how, I mean, we ain't got a couple more seasons of doing this. I don't want to spend a lot of money on a camera mount, but I really want to figure out a better way to mount this camera to prevent this from happening. Uh, we have a lot of games where this, this happens. We get this bar going across the field, and I can't see what I want to show. So, but anyway, the ball's coming down. We're going top of the second. We're going to be a lot more competitive going forward. We just, we're not going to be able to see third base and left field, unfortunately. I don't think for the whole game. Here we go. Hey, you know, the one playing third base right now, number 27, is probably going to like that. <laughs> All right. Top of a second. And, by the way, we're back to our starting pitcher for the rest of the game. I know you might not have heard it over the airplane flying over here, but I do want to point out the second baseman is the only person I can hear calling plays. Uh, the catcher should be calling plays, first baseman, third baseman, shortstop. I should be hearing all y'all hollering plays, not just second baseman.
again, I only hear a second baseman holler in place. Uh, you've heard me say in many voiceovers, I like aggressive play on defense. It is harder to dial aggression up than it is to tone it down. So I love that she went for that throw. Catcher, you should not have thrown that ball. That runner was already safe by a mile. When you threw the ball, she was already safe. You should have ate that ball, threw it back to the pitcher. That being said, I still I would rather you be overly aggressive than underly aggressive there. But what that exposed was that neither center fielder ran up back at the plate. So number 28, number 14, your job is to be behind second base when that runner was moving from first and you were not. That is not good. So we need to improve that. We need to play better there. Uh, I love that she's trying to throw the runners on third. Looks like she threw the third baseman off the baseline. That's okay. Uh, I hate the bar is blocking this over here because the game ball is going to be awarded for a play to happen at third over here, and we're not going to be able to see it because the bar is probably going to be in the way. Let's get back to the game, though, because we're about to strike this girl out here, and that will be the end of the inning whenever that happens. So let's get back and watch it. All right, so uh, what you guys don't realize here is I've just lost almost an hour to my iPad acting up on me. I'm having to reboot this thing. This, this thing is eight years old, and it is giving me fits trying to edit video. It is just, I hit a button, and the screen takes two minutes to respond. Anyways, back to that being said, I've kind of lost my train of thought after that inning. What I wanted to point out there, though, was that we're, uh, we're playing our starting defense here, our starting pitcher, our starting infield. You know, my starters, uh, what I'm going at, guys, is that, you know, we, every season through practice, we determine the depth. Uh, we get everybody out there during the season, we practice them, we learn where they're going to play at, and we set the starting rotation. We set the backup rotation. Everybody plays, and they earn their spots. And so we're getting to do a little bit of rotating in the first inning. After the first inning, we're going to our starters. So uh, we're going to play really well with our starters coming out there for the rest of the game. That being said, there will be – there's still a little more rotation still going to happen because we have one extra player than we have position for in the field. So we still rotate one player every inning. Uh, the girl rotating is a new player, so we're giving her a lot of experience. So we keep moving her from one spot to another. She really probably – we practiced her at right field all preseason, but we kind of are moving her around and let her get some other experience too because uh, I don't want to – you know, I don't want her to just stay in one spot. So she's put a lot of effort in practicing – and you know, rewarding that, moving around, letting her play a lot of other positions too. So um, getting her some experience because she's, you know, 16U with no game experience. 
So, but really good instincts. So, you know, litter practice, litter get to play in here. But anyways, though, I'm talking, I'm scrambling, because I don't remember what just happened in the game. I just, like I said, this is way after. Uh, I do know we just faced four batters, got three of them out, one with defensive out. I know we had a strike out. I don't remember how the one was. But either way, like I said, we're playing good from this point going forward, and uh, offense has come out here and score some runs. If you look only at the second inning on, we're actually going to play a tie ball game for the rest of the ball game. So, yeah, here we go now. We're about to go to the bottom of the second, and we're going to put some runs on the board.
she ruined the right right hand with the right side. If I was in that five plus your kin. So there was a lot of love about that inning. I'm going to start off with how that inning ended right there. You see number 10 running across the plate. I love it. Run across the plate no matter what. Tag home. You got on base. You're on the right to run the bases and touch home plate. Um, Number seven. That was a great hit. That was good defense by the Bulldogs getting you out right there at second base. Uh, you know, so she almost got herself a base hit there. And that would have tied the ball game had she, had she got that base hit. But either way, they made a good defensive play and they got us out. That's where I say, you know, they're just the Bulldogs are a little bit deeper than what we are. And I'm really proud of the fact that we play them competitive when we play them competitive. Uh, let's see what we got for hits there. We started off with a hit from number 27. She fouled off either three or – I got four fouls on my count. She said five when she talked to me after the game. Either way, then we had 14, put a ball in play but got out. That moved the runners. No, they did not move the runners, but they hit the ball and play. Uh, we got a ne next player. 28 gets hit by a pitch. 21 gets walked. Number 12 gets struck out looking. Now, I'm going to defend number 12 on this one. I don't know about the first two strikes because she should have swung at some of those. But uh, I even told her when she came dug out on that strike three call, that ball was over her eyes. It was so high, it was above her eyes. And I completely get she didn't swing that. Well, I told her I wouldn't swung at that one either. Now, I still will emphasize with our team, we don't need to take a strike three looking that strike three looking wasn't that bad that was a very high it just was a bad call it happens you know it's in the game bad calls happen i ain't trying to hit on the umpire there uh i have umpired one game now hey uh, guys i'm tell you it's not easy it's hard to tell if their balls or strikes maybe it's easier for standing closer than what i was but either way um pass number 12 there number 10 gets on base with a walk uh number three gets a double that girl's really clutch hitter by the way number three make sure you commit all the way on that run through first you still ran through first uh that was something i know we worked on in previous seasons but uh make sure you really fully commit kind of watch your arm right the last second you start putting your arms out you may not realize that that motion slows your run down so uh if you watch this video it's one thing i'd like you to work on with your offense here but otherwise uh number seven say fly out there at the end and good offense we're in this game we're now trailing five to four let's go to top of the third inning I'm pretty sure that's number 28 in left center field. Um, this is not the play I was talking about earlier, but this is the exact same thing. If you field that ball and throw that ball with a little more confidence, you've got that runner out of second. Kid, you're a good outfielder. You're a good defender. I don't know why you don't always play like it. You're right there. You look like you're just not putting your full effort into it. I, I really want to see you commit to that. I want you to commit to that run, commit to that throw. You would have got that runner out of second. And this ain't the play I was talking about in the, after the game. That's coming later. Hey. 
Both from center fielders there, number 28, and I believe that's number 10 on right center side. It is. I see the glove on the right hand. Good job backing up second base there. That's what you do. If you look closely behind that bar, you'll notice the runner come off the bag. That is why we always put a tag when a runner steals. And I believe our third baseman did put a tag down there, but earlier in the game she did not put a tag down once. So that's why we always put a dag tag down there. She overran the base, and that would have been an easy out. Had we have a little bit better throw, that would have been an easy out. Nine percent certain this is going to be the at bat here. Watch our left center fielder. She could have got the out at third base. She hesitated and she didn't throw the ball and she had it. I, this is why I tell you all the time when you watch this number 28, you need to play with more confidence because you can make these plays. You just doubt yourself and then you end up not doing it. So, yeah, play with more confidence, kid, because you got the ability to do this. This is, would have been two outs you could have gotten defensively in this inning especially the second one coming up here. So a lot to break down there, number 28, already said everything else, but you just should have came over one more step. Get in front of that ball, don't let it run off your side like that. Uh, catch her there, you hear us all congratulating her. Do what you gotta do to get their attention and get the ball to be thrown at home. And say, let's be aggressive, let's go for the out. Let's don't, the runner was already past second, there's no point throwing a second base here. Anyways, here we go. So this is one of those plays I was mentioning earlier here. The pitcher drops the ball. It's going to happen. Uh, catcher forgot there's runners on base. We, we can't compound mistakes with mistakes. Uh, now I'm also seeing this here. I thought from the dugout that was a play of frustration. I think catcher just forgot what was going on because uh, she had her back to me. I couldn't see it. But uh, you got to remember the situation of the base runners there and pay attention to what's going on there because uh, we have a bad habit on this team of when mistakes happen, we compound them and they get worse. So let's, we need to stop doing that. You know, we gotta be, when mistakes happen, that we limit the damage with backing up other plays. But anyways, like I was saying, uh, I thought after the game, I, I had mentioned that play there, and I, it looked, I thought that was more frustration. And watching it in here on the iPad, even though I can't hardly see it because the screen's minimized for the editing. Um, I don't believe she was frustrated like I thought in the game, after seeing that there. I think she just, 
lost track of where the base runners were. So, uh, anyways, that being said, though, yeah, let's let's keep focus on the game. Let's not turn our backs to plays. Always remember, there's the next play to be made. Here we go. Uh, when a mistake happens, it's not the end of the play. So, anyways, though, that's that's enough of that. Let's get back to playing on the game here. Like I say, these are little mistakes we can fix. I'm not worried about these mistakes. Uh, aggressive playing we can go with. It's just make sure you pay attention to play. Make sure you play confidently when you feel the ball and throw it in. Get in front of the ball when it's hit to you. Simple stuff. All right, here we go. And what I was mentioning earlier here, right center fielder number 10. Hey, good play. Ball was hit right to her. She fielded the ball, threw it straight to the cutoff player. I mean, that was a good play all around from a brand new player who's never played this game before. Good defense. I'm going to go in there. I want to congratulate her on that play. Hey, catcher, I know you're frustrated. And yes, that was a bad throw, but you did exactly what we coached you to do. Throw the ball. You'll get better the more you do it. Don't worry about that. Also, right center fielder, again, good job being there back in the play. This is the game ball play here. Catcher misses the throw to third. Shortstop's back in the play up, feels the ball, throws back home, gets the out at home. That was the game ball play right there from number 19. That is what I was saying earlier that is taking a bad situation and not making it worse. We were in our position to back up the play, and we got an out because of it. This is what I keep telling y'all on the outfield. While we back up plays, y'all had numerous opportunities to back up a play and record an out. And the outfield's not getting the job done, the infield is. Yeah, you're right. 
All right, so a uh, good chance to learn from the other team there. That was a batter's interference because when the play came in sliding in at home, the batter did not get out of the way. Uh, you don't see that very often, but that's what that was there. Um, I want to point out here, though, you know, we left opportunities out there. We're playing okay defense. You know, a lot of plays are getting made, but we left opportunity out there. I believe we dropped a fly ball from the pitcher. You know, when a ball's popped up off the tip of a bat like that, it's a lot of spin. It's hard to catch. We had a left center fielder not put full effort into throwing some the ball back in and could have got a couple outs. Um, you know, that's that's the thing we talk about with the outfield. We need y'all to play a little bit better. Uh, 28, you can do this stuff. You need to dial up the aggression because you got the ability to play great. I've seen you do it. I know you can do it. Uh, you just got to believe you can do it too. Um, again, the, the play at third there, good job. 19 back on the play. Uh, I wish I could see on the bar is in the way. I don't know if it was a bad throw from the catcher or a bad catch from the third baseman. I couldn't see it in the, in the game either. But either way, whatever happened, 19 was there back in the play up. She get the game ball for that play because that's what we're emphasizing. Defense, back each other up, limit the damage. Uh, we keep getting beat by the same plays over and over again. Uh, we've had the same play beat us two games in a row. So, uh, and that's a bunt. So, yeah, we got to limit that damage there. Number 10, as I pointed out there, I mean, good job for a brand new player. You're picking up like she is on defense. Um, so, yeah, there's a a lot of good there, a little bit of bad, a lot of lessons to be learned from both teams there. This is why we film it. This is why we watch the game so we can grow and get better. So, anyways, going into the bottom of the third. I don't know what score is. Nine to four? Is that right? I think it's nine to four. Bottom of third. Here we go. Uh, you're going to see me walk out here for a second. I'm actually looking at the camera, trying to see if it's still recording. I can't see the red light on it. Um, it the camera took quite a few hits from the from the uh, high pitches, and so I want to check and make sure it was still recording. Right here, I'm looking up at it, and I see that I see a red light, and the umpire's talking about how the camera's been hit a lot. And then eventually, while me and him were talking, I'm going to look up my shoulder and say, oh, hey, she's in the batter's box. We're ready to go. <laughs> so I stopped myself and got out of the way and let the game continue. Hey! 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 
ball, two strikes. Yes, I'm watching the game film there. Uh, you gotta swing at that one. I mean, that was on the outside edge of the plate, but that's a ball that can usually get called a ball or a strike. When you got two strikes on you, even if you fouled off three or four pitches there, you gotta swing at that one. You don't wanna take that strike looking. Look, well, this is one of the things I wanna point out here, ladies. Uh, this team is not unbeatable. I mean, they make mistakes too. They're not perfect. So we can capitalize on their mistakes and we can win games if we're willing to do it. Uh, we there we got a hit that we were lucky and it fell on the play and they didn't perfectly cover that play and you know, mistakes can be made, so we gotta capitalize on them. Oh, 
All right, so the one thing I want to focus on for this inning on offense for the Tide, um, we got struck out looking twice. I've said it before, we don't do that. You swing at strike three. Now, one of them, no, both of them actually, both of you saw eight pitches who struck out looking. You worked eight pitches in that count. You fouled off several pitches, and then you took strike three looking. When you got two strikes on you, you got to protect that plate. Swing at anything close. And um, we shouldn't have taken those strike threes to be the one of those. But that being said, those are things we can learn from because both of you did foul a bunch of pitches off. So it's a small tweak, a small mental thing in the game we can work on. And we'll emphasize this more before we prepare for our next two games next week. Uh, the other one, number 27, got struck out swinging. And number 22 got that little blooper that fell in for a base hit, and then their defense didn't really feel the bases 100% correctly. So we got lucky on that one. They gave us that hit, but we were not able to capitalize off that luck. We backed up with two strikeouts. So we left that runner stranded. I believe she got second base when she stole as far as she got. So we would not get any runs on the board, and this was the meat of our lineup. Um, that was our best hitters going up there, and they just got us out. So, with that being said, um, pretty much that was ball game, but we're going to play the next inning anyways. we still got time left on the clock, but we at this point cannot come back. Um, technically, if we'd shut them out, we could have kept going. But we have a five-run rule limit where if you got five minutes to go and more than a five-run difference in the game, they'll call the game on a mercy rule. Just everybody can go home. That's preventing us from having two-hour-long games. So, uh, that's about to happen to us here, and the umpires are going to let us finish the inning. We actually were supposed to end the game earlier. But, uh, you know, we made you tell them then we need defensive practice. So, uh, oh, there we go to bad throw again. Uh, we got to work on that, catcher. But anyways, the more you do it, the more you get better at it. What we told the umpire, we need to play, we need to practice, so let's keep the game going. That way we can get better for our next game. So that's what we do, and that's why the score is going to run up a little bit, and we're going to end up giving up 11 altogether. Here we go with the top of the fourth, the final inning of a game. All right, ladies, um, I've made videos on this. We've done entire practices covering this play, yet still this play breaks down. Infield, y'all all pretty much did the play right. I know there was a bad throw from the uh, third baseman there. Just like last play, the pitcher made a bad throw. I'm not worried about the bad throw. What concerns me is the lack of participation from our outfield. Right fielder is the only one who even moved. She went to the wrong place again. Uh, she went to where she should have been the last time this play happened because she is at least thinking about the play. But again, I'm about to, she just doesn't understand the game. I don't know how to help her understand the game here. But here's what happened. Right fielder, you should have been behind the throw. You should be watching where the ball is and go behind the throw. It's not just a matter of running to the base in front of you. You need to be behind where the throw is coming from. You were in a great position if the throw came from the catcher. 
The throw did not come from the catcher. The ball went down the third baseline. You should have been in foul territory backing up that play behind the throw. The rest of you in the outfield, I mean, what are y'all doing? You're just standing there. You're not even participating in the game. You're spectating. This is not a spectator game. This is participation. You have to play along with the team. None of you are moving in to back up the play. Shortstop, good job going back over to cover second, but you notice nobody was on third base because the outfield did not do their job. They failed to contribute to the play. No matter how many times we practice this, the same mistakes keep happening from the same positions. Outfield, you are to participate in every single play that happens on defense. Do not ever stand back and watch something happen. That's all I've got. You didn't get it through the – I made a specific bunt video that none of y'all watch. It has five views. Me and my daughter are two of the views. So three people on the team have watched that video. And the rest of you have not. And we had a practice on it, and none of this stuff is working. None of it's helping. The outfield is just not contributing to the plays. And I don't know what else to do to get y'all to play along. But either way, let's get back on this game. Please learn from this game. If you're going to continue to play ball, don't stand around and watch. Participate in the game. Watch this video and learn from it, and you can get better. And when you play good, you will enjoy this game so much better than when you're just standing around watching. All right, so my mic died in the middle of me talking about this. Let's try this again here. This video should have been a video about me teaching number three here how to correctly back up first base. She did back up first. The problem is watching this on replay and why I got fired up all over again was that it, I just realized watching this, the right fielder outplayed our entire outfield. Nobody else in the outfield contributed to the play. The only one who has an excuse here is number 10, who is a brand new player playing in her third game. Everybody else on the team, what are y'all doing? I got my shortstop over here trying to cover second and third base because the outfield is not helping. I mean, ladies, if you're not going to play along with the game, go sit on the bench. Don't go out there and don't cast a shadow on the grass if you're not contributing on the play. I mean, that's all I got there. Uh, right fielder now, I mean, we'll work with you and teach you what to do there. But ultimately, you should be behind the throw, not behind the base. So, I don't know. We'll practice this more whenever we get a chance. But unfortunately, fall practice is over. So, we kind of got what we got now. Uh, let's get back to the game. So this is the point I was talking about. The game is actually over, but we're going to continue playing. We're going to continue scoring because uh, we need a defensive practice. This is uh, – we got a lot of mistakes clean up here. And the only way to get better at doing this game is to play the game and to practice. Honestly, you'll get better in practice, but practice is over. So we kind of got what we got now. Practice all happened in August. So we got to play the game so we can continue to grow, continue to get better, and that's what's going on here. But the game technically is over. We're going to keep playing.
All right, I like seeing this play right here. Catcher's going for the out. We actually got the out. We picked a runner off, stealing second. Second base and shortstop are both there. Looks like the center fielders are moving in to make a play there. You know, last season, we melted down a lot as a team. And it looks like this season we've improved that some, even though, honestly, in game two we had a little meltdown there. We kind of fell apart. But what I'm seeing here is that we're moving on. We're making the next play. We've got to get to that point. That way these plays don't beat us. So, yeah, good effort there, and I like the contribution from what I can see there just in the voiceover. So this is why we play these extra outs. This is why we went to the umpires like, hey, let's just play out the rest of the clock because we got more to learn on defense, and right there we just had a good play on defense. Three balls, one strike. Again, left field, you're standing there watching. Nobody's backing up third right now, and she's off third, getting ready to field the play there. If this ball gets thrown to third, we're going to empty the bases out again because the outfield, again, is not contributing. All right, ladies, I'm going to start with this one here. Um, this is actually an improvement over the last game. I want to start with that. Let's go back to that bunt play. Infield, you all did it correctly. Outfield, you all did it incorrectly. Simple as I can put it. Uh, when it comes to backing up plays, outfield is sometimes backing up plays, and outfield sometimes is not backing up plays. Um, really, we're at a problem right now with this team, what I see, and I said this in this post-game meeting right here in a minute. Number one thing this team needs to work on right now, we are striking out looking for strike three. We don't take strike three looking. I even told number 12, I get hers. I watched that pitch. That pitch was high. But that's going to happen sometimes. Umpires can make bad calls. You're going to have a strikeout looking here or there. But we had four strikeouts looking in this game. That is way too many. We're not being aggressive at the plate. All of our offense right now is coming from two batters. And we got about three or four more who are somewhat contributing on offense. And the rest of the team is not doing anything on offense. They're sitting there. It looks like they're trying to get walked. And that's not how we play this game. Um, defensively, though, outfield, y'all got to step the game up. Y'all are not doing your backup plays. We 
big picture here from the outfield. Okay, I want you all to see the big picture here. We try to teach our infielder to play very aggressive. The idea behind that is that, number one, it, it makes them grow. Playing more aggressive is how you get these infielders to grow and get better. I don't want to teach them to play conservative. So playing more aggressive means we're going to make more mistakes. And we're going to have plays blow up on us. That is why it is critical that our outfield backs up our infield. We've taught this. Spent entire practices covering my entire practices. We spent practices, we spent entire like 30 minute segments of the practice with the outfield solely focused on backing up the infield. We literally spent half of a practice doing that on multiple practices this season, not to mention last season doing this stuff. And at the end of the day, the outfield is just not doing it. I mean, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. We've taught them what to do, told them what to do. We've practiced what to do. I'm doing voiceovers on videos because nothing else is working. You're just not doing your job out there. You need to contribute to the plays. And I say that you are sometimes doing it. There are a few plays that I see the outfield moving. It's just you're not there every play. And the plays you're not there are the ones that are blowing up on us. So it's, ladies, I'm going to tell you now, if you're going to play on a team that I'm coaching, outfield is one of the hardest positions to play on a team I'm coaching because you have to run a lot. And if you don't want to run a lot, you shouldn't be playing this game. This is a, it's a sport. You know, if you want to watch the game, you're welcome to come sit in the benches and watch the game or the bleachers and watch. But you signed up to play the game. And all of you have signed up to come back and play this game on the same team multiple seasons in a row. Because ladies, I'm going to tell you, when you play this game right, it is really fun. Whether you win or lose, it is really fun. That first game was great. And we lost that game. You know why it was great? Because we everybody contributed. Everybody did their job. We didn't have plays break down. The outfield was backing up the infield. Everything was going good in that game. We just lost. And it was okay. And you know what? There were mistakes in that game. But that's how fun the game is when you play it correctly. This game here really honestly was played fairly well. As much as I'm critiquing the mistakes here, I'm critiquing the mistakes because they keep happening over and over again. This game actually was overall played good. But in a few plays here and there, the defense doesn't contribute. The outfield doesn't contribute, excuse me. And when the outfield doesn't contribute, the defensive play falls apart because I have the infield doing what they're supposed to be doing and the outfield not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And when you have half the team not contributing, the play is going to break down and it's going to empty the bases out every single time. So anyways, ladies, I hope this reaches you. I hope you hear this and you learn what you're supposed to be doing and you get it. So uh, that being said, though, hey, listen, that's the bad. This, this was a big improvement from the last game, from game two. Game two was was not a good showing. Game three was a much better showing with some bad moments. So uh, that being said, let's stop this voiceover and let's look up the stats and move on to that because there is some good. There's, there's honestly more good than bad. It's just that the bad really hurt us. All right, so we're going to start off with that first ending. Number 16, getting to pitch for her first time starting for us at 16U. She got to pitch in a scrimmage game. Her first time in an actual game and took her a couple batters, but she really settled in. She got in her rhythm. And like I, like I said earlier, I'm okay with hits. I don't like walks. Once she got past some first three batters, I think she's going to walk one more. So she gave up five runs, and that's okay. It was hits. It was chances for us to play defense. That was an acceptable – I accepted that outcome when we put her starting pitching. And we're going to do that more this season. Between her and number seven, are both going to get a couple of games that they're going to start. We'll give them an inning to start the game, and then we'll put some other players in, and we'll accept the outcome of the game because the idea is to get them reps, get them practice. Um, also, by the way, number 16, good job on the bunt coverage. Uh, we worked with that with her because the last time she did not go to the correct spot, she did with some other teams. There's multiple ways to do bunt coverages. And the thing with this team was getting everybody on our team on the same page of how we do bunt coverage, and she correctly did it. So good job there. You learned from the last game. Uh, let's move on to the team stats here. All right, we're going to try this again because I ran out of time on this one. We once again only had three hits as a team, number 22, number 27, and number three. Each get one hit. Ladies, that's not enough offense. We need more than that. We had a couple ground outs and a couple pop outs. Number seven, number 14. Did she get one of this one? See, I'm not forgetting. 16 got one. Um, yeah, and then we had four strikeouts looking. That's not good. Uh, pitching wise, two 
hits off of our starting pitcher, number 16 there. So good for her. Or I thought it was three hits, actually. Anyways, the two or three hits she gave up, hey, that's good. That's what we want from a starting pitcher. Uh, the walks is what we don't want. But again, you know, you're going to have that at this point right now. She's just now starting to pitch for us. Number 22 came in the second inning. She walked. Oh, God. I don't remember now. I think she had seven hits given up. She had four strikeouts. I'm forgetting her walks. I want to say it was also four, but I could be wrong. Um, for the season, because we're a third of the way into the season now, number 27 leads with the most hits with four. 22 has the second most with three hits. 14 has two hits. She's third. 19, 16, and 3 each have one. So they're tied at whatever that is now fourth. And then we got five who have not got a hit yet. 10, 21, 7, 28, 12. Still looking for their first hit. OPS leaders. Uh, right now it's 3, then 14, 27, 22, 12, 16, 19, 21, 7, 10, and 28 is last. Um, so yeah, batting average leaders, 27 is number 1, then 14, 22, 3, 16, 19, 10, 21, 7, 28, 12. It's kind of where we're at for the season there. Um, again, like I said, this is fall. This is kind of practice, so we're not as focused on the stats as we are in the spring. This is more stats as a tool. And I have a, I'm a mechanic, so I use a lot of tools. That's why I'm making videos. That's why you see me scoring the games now on my iPad. This has saved me some time. Uh, I'm allowing me to score in the game that way. It's let me pull the stats up quicker. I can see things faster. I go back home and rewatch the games. I mean, every tool I can find to help you girls get better, I'll use it. So, uh, hopefully you find this helpful, and hopefully we continue to grow as a team. So, this is it for this game. Uh, it's the only game we got this week. We go back to having two games next week. We may try to figure out a way to throw a practice in. Whether it be we just go in the cages and work there, or we come to my house and use a pitching machine in the field in my backyard. I don't know how we're going to do this. I don't know if we can. We can't use the fields. The fields are full. So, that's we know that's not an option. Either way, that is it for game number three. I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, I'm going to say with this, like I said before, game was a lot better than game two. Y'all are improving, but there's still work to be done. Let's get at it.